Hello, this is the first of uh, several videos on multivariable calculus course that I teach at University of Maryland. So in this course, we're going to talk about functions of several variables. In order to be able to achieve that, we have to first understand the geometry and algebra of uh, three-dimensional space. So the first thing is we're going to talk about what we did in two dimension in algebra and uh, pre-calculus. And then we basically have to implement pretty much the similar strategies in three dimension. And then after understanding the relation between algebra and geometry of three dimension, we'll be able to talk about its calculus. OK, so the first thing is what are points and what are lines and planes axes in three dimension? same stuff that we have done in algebra and you have seen that in high school. So in 2D or R2 to each point on the plane we assign a pair of real numbers x comma y. This allows us to represent lines, circles, parabolas and other curves with equations such that such as y equals 2x minus 1, x squared plus y squared equals 1, y equals 2x squared plus 3, etc. We would like to do the same thing in three dimension. So we have the geometry of three dimension, which would mean we are talking about, and first I'm going to talk about two dimension. We have the geometry of two dimension. We have points and we have the algebra. So algebraically, we can represent points by things of the sort x comma y pair of real numbers. We have lines that we can represent by equations, y equals 3x plus 2. We have circles that we can represent by x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 5. We have parabolas that we can represent by equations of the, of the sort 2x squared plus 3 etc. So for anything that we have, uh, we, for anything algebraic, we can represent it by a an object in geometry and vice versa. So this is basically what we have done in single variable calculus and prior to single variable calculus. Now we want to do something, the same thing in um, three dimension. So we need to start with an origin. So we need to have one point called the origin because we are working in three dimension, we need to have three different axes. So here we need an x-axis, we need a y-axis, and we need a third dimension. This is generally the way I draw my axes. So there are two properties that these three axes must have. The first one is that they must have to be uh, perpendicular to each other. So x and y axis must be perpendicular, x and z axis must be perpendicular, and y and z axis must also be perpendicular. So we say they have to be pairwise perpendicular, sometimes in advanced math they say orthogonal. And they also must satisfy the right hand rule. So if you point your thumb in the direction of the z axis, your fingers of the right hand must sweep the region from the x-axis to the y-axis. That is called the right-hand rule. Now, how do we find coordinates of a point? If you are given a point on the space, what we do is we drop perpendiculars from that point to the axis. So if we drop this perpendicular, that would give us the y component of this point. If we drop the perpendicular here, we would get the x-coordinate of the point and dropping perpendicular here, we would get the y coordinate. So this point would be a comma b comma c. And of course, the directions that I have drawn are the positive directions of the x, y, and z axis. So at the bottom, we will get the negative direction of the z axis. To the left, we would get the negative direction of the x, uh, y axis. And in the back of our uh, screen, we will see the negative direction of the z axis. So now, how do we understand the regions that these vector, these lines, these axes and planes create? So if you look at the three axes that we have, the z-axis, the y-axis, and the x-axis, which again, it is important for them to be pairwise perpendicular and also uh, satisfy the right hand rule. If you look at these, they create three planes. The bottom plane 
is called the XY plane. There's a plane at the back, this plane. This is called the YZ plane because the Y and Z axis are on that plane. And this plane, which is the plane on the left, this is called the XZ plane. These three planes are called coordinate planes. Now, if you think about these three coordinate planes, if you look at one plane, it divides the space into two different portions. So if you look at one plane in, two, in three dimension, you have up and down. Now, if you draw another plane that intersects this plane, what you're going to get is, um, in addition to up and down, you're also going to get two other things to the right of this plane and to the left of this plane. So we have right, up, left, up, right, down, left, up, left, down. So we get four different regions. If we draw one more plane that is perpendicular to both of these planes, what we end up getting is each of those four regions are going to be divided into um, two. So we had four regions and now we're going to have eight regions. Now going back and looking at the three axes, they create eight different regions. Each of these regions are called octants. And the one that X and Y and Z are all positive is called the first octant. There are eight octants and the others do not have uh, standard names. Okay, so now that we understand points, let's talk about one of the very first things that we learned after learning about points in two dimension, which is the distance formula. So what is the distance formula? It's the exact same process that we did in, in two dimension, except you have an additional uh, z1 minus z2 squared. So if you take two points, x1 comma y1 comma z1 and x2 comma y2 comma z2, the distance between these two would be, so what you do is you drop the perpendicular and these points at the bottom are going to be points x1 comma y1 comma 0 and x2 comma y2 comma 0. The distance between these two points at the bottom can be evaluated by the distance formula square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. That's the distance at the bottom. And then we have a right triangle here. In this right triangle, this one is z1 minus z2 or z2 minus z1, depending on which one is larger. And once you write down the Pythagorean theorem in this triangle, you'll get this formula, that the distance between point P and Q, these two points, is in fact the square root of the difference between the x-coordinate squared plus the difference between the y-coordinate squared plus the difference between the z-coordinate squared. So that's the distance formula. It's very similar to two dimension. Now that we know the distance formula, we can find equations of um, spheres. So let's say you have a point A comma B comma C. We want to find all points that have a certain radius R to that point. So if the radius is R, if you take a point x, y, z, the distance is r. So what that means is the square root of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z minus c squared, this distance would have to be r. And if we square that, we get exactly this equation. So the sphere of radius r centered at a comma b comma c is given by x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z minus c squared equals r squared. Let's look at one example uh, on spheres. Show that this represents a sphere, find its center and radius. So what do we need to do? We need to create perfect squares in order to write it down in the form of uh, equation of a sphere. Now looking at here, we have x squared and 2x. So those two will have to complete this square in order to get the perfect square. So how do we get the perfect square? Well, we'll have to start with x squared plus 2x. This is going to be x plus 1 squared. So in order to complete this square, you'll take the coefficient of x, divide it by 2, and then you square that. You subtract 1 squared from that. 
And then we have two other terms here, y squared and negative y. Those two would be y squared minus y would be y minus one half. So again, we take this one um, divided by two and then square. So minus one fourth. And once we plug it into the equality that we are given, we get x plus y squared one squared minus one plus y minus one half squared minus a quarter. We have a z squared and we also have a one left. So that's equal to zero. We don't have a linear term for z, so we don't need to complete the square for z because we already have a perfect square. So that gives us x plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 half squared plus z squared. And once we do the calculation, negative 1 half, negative 1 and 1 cancel, and we take 1 fourth to the other side, so we get 1 fourth on that side. So the radius of this sphere is going to be square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half, and the center would be negative 1 comma 1 half comma 0. And these numbers come from here, here, and whatever is next to z, which there's nothing next to z, so that's exactly 0. So that's the center, and that is the radius. Okay, so one last thing, and then we are done with this part of the uh, lecture. A closed ball is all points inside or on a sphere. So if you look at a sphere, all of the points on the sphere or inside that is called a closed ball. An open ball is everything that is inside a sphere. So if you take a sphere, everything inside that sphere is called an open ball. So that's what an open ball is, and that's what a closed ball is. Now, how do we write down the equations? Since it is inside or on a sphere, it would be less than or equal to radius squared. And inside the sphere, it would be just less than radius squared. To summarize what we did in this video is we understood x, y, z axes. They must satisfy the right-hand rule. And we also understood how to find coordinates of a point and then we talked about the distance formula and the equation of a sphere. And this brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.